hey everybody welcome to another episode of the church leadership lab live here live uh, yeah here in warm dallas texas warm you're being so kind warm is a under is that's what we call an understatement. an understatement you're trying to be very polite and not offend yes dallas proper to all our dallas listeners or what? texas listeners what the heck we're praying for you that is just my <laughs> what is happening and, and your electrolytes and <laughs> your hydration that, in yes, general and exactly like, at um, this point your entire bodily functions like yes. how are you alive <laughs> yes um but no we've, we've had a great time here at this conference to be able to connect with with people um and also to be able to uh, record some episodes live which yeah. has been super fun have conversations in person yep. um with with different guests mm-hmm. but this episode this is one. this one right now <laughs> is a little special um uh-huh. i think in the in the title it says uh ama which is ask me anything so if you didn't know what that stood for and you're like what is ama and you've always wanted to ask yeah because you see it everywhere and you're I, like, I don't know what that you're means like, what is this ask me anything and so we have <laughs> uh some questions here uh that i think probably a lot of our listeners um mm-hmm. you know are working through thinking through figuring yeah. out uh, and so we just want to answer those and provide our best help based on our experience in ministry, mm-hmm. our many conversations with people leading the charge when it comes to digital tools, connecting yep. with people, just all of that. So does that sound good? Sounds so good. You up for it? I was always the person who was afraid to ask questions, ah, like in school. Yeah, yeah. And I've tried to tell my daughters, if you're thinking it, someone else is thinking it, and they just need somebody to be brave. Yeah. So well, there's a had, good chance. We've all had that moment, right, where somebody asks a question, you're like... Thank goodness. I didn't want to ask that. But, but I'm I w- so glad you did. I wanted it answered. <laughs> right, right. So I'm really appreciative. So thank you. Yes. So if you're asking the question, there's a good chance a lot of other people are also like, oh, thank goodness. Yes. So that's so. what we're going to do. We're yeah. going to be those people for you. So let's jump in. All okay. right. First question is this. Uh, it seems like I'm hearing more and more about AI and all these different apps and tools. How can churches and pastors use these tools should they use them? couple good questions in there. Uh, what is it? Should should we use it? Yeah. How to use it? Yeah. All good questions. Yeah. Um, we had a fantastic guest recently that did nothing but talk about this. So yeah. my answer is pause after listening and go back and listen to that episode, yeah. right? There yeah. are really intelligent people who do nothing but study this stuff. They understand it. They're confident. So they are great resources. So for me, this is new yeah. territory. Well, and we, yeah. So Jason Thacker, yep. um, episode 28, I think it was. Oh, wow. If I look remember at you. Correctly. Okay. I know. Yeah. That, I mean, they're all so special. You the, know I, mean, I mean, every one of them. So, but no, but our, our conversation with Jason in particular is awesome. Really and, good. And he hits on a lot of the, um, how should we think about this? Mm -hmm. Should we use this? Um, You know, just some of those things that that I think are really important to think through in a, um, what does this mean about who we are? What does this say about us Mm -hmm. as humans? I think that there's then kind of another conversation of, so practically, what are these, what can these tools do for me in ministry? Right, there's like an ethical, moral, and even like a theological side of it. Yeah which he did a great job and that's what he does yeah, for a living. Right. So go listen to him. He can do it better than we do. And then also the, all right, how can I use them yeah. practically? I think that what I would say with, let's just take like chat GPT. Cause that one's okay. in the news yep. a lot or, or like, you know, a, a, a chat bot type mm-hmm. AI thing. Cause there's, there's, that's the thing. There's so many that right. the tools go beyond that into visual, into automation, into like all that stuff. Right. Um, but like, let's take something like that. I think one way to use that really well and in a way that, um, like I would never say, you know, have that write a sermon for you or whatever. But if you can, like, if you can use those tools, especially to avoid like the fear of the blank canvas, you know, or the like, I have nothing. I need to write this email or this announcement or Mm -hmm. this social media post or whatever. Um, it can be a really good Kickstarter That's to kind of yeah. get you there and get you started. Mm-hmm. It can also be a really good brainstorm tool. Mm-hmm. So, again, you're not saying, "Dear robots, please, you know, direct <laughs> Think the <for> me. <laughs> direction of our ministry for the next 12 <laughs> right. months." Of course not. Yeah. But you can say, like, what are some interesting, you know, things churches have have done for community engagement? Right. 
and it's going to develop a list of things, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I think it's seeing that as like sort of an accelerator, not the thing that's going to give you the final product. I like that you said accelerator. That's such a great idea. I didn't even, my, my thoughts didn't go towards that. But that's a really great use case. Yeah. I'm brain dead. Give me some ideas and then let me apply the human filter and go, that doesn't fit us. That, ooh, I would have never thought of that one. Yeah. Let's work on that. Accelerator, I think is a good word. Something for me is efficiency. Mm. You know, we've talked a lot about staff burnout and people are just, we are all doing a lot more yep. than what our one job title says that we should be. Yeah. Yeah. So if we can utilize tools to get us out from behind our computers and into our communities, I think about all of our pastor and church leaders you didn't wake up every day going, how can I work on my computer more? Right, right. Your heart hurts for your community and you want to um, be that trusted resource, be that mentor, be that coach, be that spiritual connector to the people in your community. And if you're stuck behind your email, your inbox, and if these tools can help give you time back in your calendar to do more of what God's given you to do. Yeah. That to me is an excellent use of a tool yeah. to create efficiency. Hundred percent. Yeah, and that's like again the the like chat GPT's in the news or that's you know, mm. kids are cheating on their exams and papers <laughs> with it left and right. But however yeah, however, <laughs> yeah, there's a whole other thing from automation to, you know, different things like yeah. that I think that are really helpful. So and that's the, good. the last thing that I think we we agree on is this is here to stay. Yep. It in and of itself is not bad. Right. So I don't think it's something, I'm not sure if we address that. We should not be afraid. Yeah. Even from a ethical, theological standpoint. Right. But using tools with wisdom. Yeah. But to create and ha having boundaries of what am I using these for? Yeah. And then, yeah. Well, it's like that. Yeah. That with, so, so it's a, like, a, like everything, it's balanced. So we're right. not afraid. Right. And we're also not like, it's all good. I'm going to do all of it, embrace sure. all of it. I'm sure it's Just fine. I'll trust it blindly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So no, there's really good, good people in the ministry space that have learned, studied, and you can go, I don't know it. I don't understand it, yeah. but I know those guys. So yep. go listen to the other epi episode 28, apparently. There we go. Yeah. All right. Next question. Given the instability of the economy over the last few years, what are some ways uh, that we uh, can encourage consistent generosity? I think, I think this is a, this is a good question. There's been, it's been all over the place. Cause mm -hmm. like we, you know, we were actually having a recent conversation mm -hmm. where we were talking about, actually there was kind of this increase in, uh, during, you know, the pandemic with giving yeah. with, where a lot of churches saw it come up, but then there's a lot of talk of recessions, not a recession. Right. It is, you know, and what is happening and clear, in the entire universe. Yeah, clearly <laughs> I am not uh, an economist and not? so it, based on, <laughs> Yeah, uh, people are not shocked to hear that. <laughs> um, but I think that, that there is sort of this idea of, okay, how do we encourage mm -hmm. generosity and how do we see mm -hmm. stable generosity, hopefully, yeah. you know, to fuel our ministry and our mission? Mm -hmm. um, I have a few thoughts. Do you have a few thoughts? I do. Okay, let's yes. hear your thoughts. Consistent generosity. This is the same answer that I've given for the past five years coming out of nonprofit fundraising and then my role here has yeah. largely been in, in our giving space right and it is communication it is so simple and I don't mean to oversimplify it but I've, I've used this analogy so many times it's kind of cheesy but if my home has some repair work yeah I know about it so I'm gonna invest in it I'm going to spend my money to improve my home yep my church home is the exact same way but if my pastoral staff does not inform me of the needs and not just things that need to be fixed, not just the parking lot needs to be repaved, but right. here are the missions that we support. Here are our growth initiatives. Here's where we want to be in the next three to five years. If they don't tell me quite literally the financial needs of my church home, I don't know that they need my dollars. Yeah. So communication, yep. openly sharing vision, as well as repair work. Yeah. You know, sometimes you got a leaky faucet. You got to tell your people, yeah. but um, visionary ideas and then communication of the tools available. Yeah. So helping our churches understand quite literally when you schedule recurring giving, that helps us budget yep. in the exact same way that we budget our home life. I know my income coming in, I know yep. my expenses, I know how to plan accordingly. Our church homes are the exact same. Yeah. They need our predictable giving yeah. because that is their predictable income. So communication of vision and communication of budget needs yeah and then everybody goes oh 
I see how I fit into this picture. Yeah. Happy to help. Yeah, and I think that sometimes sometimes we 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 underestimate how helpful it can be to just be that honest about it. Right. Hey, here's why recurring giving helps us. Yep. Like when you can go in and look at, okay, you know, in the month of August, mm-hmm. here's what we know is going to come in. Mm-hmm. Like that's so helpful. Yeah, and and I get like one, God's going to provide. Mm-hmm. Always does. Um you know, there's a there's a act of forming and shaping and discipling your people mm-hmm. to be generous, to live lives of generosity, all of that. But there's just some practical things too to right. make that easier. What if every month you and your wife sat there and were like, Well, I don't know how much money we're gonna make this month. Yeah. And that was every single month. Yeah. Like, well, I don't know how much we're gonna make. I know how much our mortgage costs and yeah. I know how much food our kids eat, but I really don't know how much money I'm gonna bring we'll home. We'll see. <laughs> With yeah. Fingers crossed. That would not go well. We that would, would be, be stressed really all stressful, the time. Yeah, right? Exactly. So, communication, yeah, I think you nailed it. Yeah. I think too, um, making it easy, like lowering all the roadblocks totally. for people to get that set up. I think about like when I buy something on, on Amazon or there's even a few different services, I, I'm blanking on the names of them. But like, you know, different online stores use mm-hmm. them to where it has my information. Right. And it's like literally two clicks of a button. Correct. And it's amazing. It's painfully easy. Yeah. Yeah, I know. There's a way I'm like, mm, that's... I wish some things were actually harder because yeah. I might be more aware of my right. expenditures. <laughs> but things like, you know, using a QR code right. to get that set up. Having, a, you know, an instructional video, even if it's just a screen recording on your Absolutely. phone, um, stuff like that to where you're making those, you know, mobile app, having mm-hmm. that also. I think the more you do that and the more you put that in front of people right. as an option, the more they jump on mm-hmm. and, and adopt that. Yeah. So. One last thing that comes to mind is leading by example. Mm. If my pastors communicate to me in that giving moment, you know, this is the way that I give. the The information's on the screen. Right. This is how me and my family give, uh, and then this is why it matters. Yep. But doing that with and for your congregation, um, I'm gonna always be a little bit more inclined to do what I see my leaders also doing. Yeah, hundred percent. So I think that's a really key point. Yeah, it's good. All right, next one. Uh, da, 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 da. We have this is. This one, this happens often. We have a few people carrying the majority of the load in our church. We just talked about that. Yeah. 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 They're feeling burned out and tired. How can we get more people involved in serving and helping with the ministry? Mm. I have thoughts. Do you have thoughts? I do. You go first this time. Okay. Uh, I think one that obviously like the, 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 I think the automatic reaction is we need more volunteers. Let's ask for more volunteers, right? Like announcement. Sounds so simple. Yeah. Announcement on Sunday and we'll go for it. Obviously, that's like kind of the floor. Mm -hmm. I think one of the things that is underutilized is not necessarily leading with like, we need you, please come do this, Mm -hmm. but saying essentially storytelling around here's here's why this is awesome. Here's the impact of your participation. Yeah, here's the impact. Here is... You know, even on things that might feel like, well, it's the parking team or it's the whatever, um, helping people understand and connect and make those connections. Mm-hmm. I think using the power of story to do that then has people like chasing a vision yeah. versus like, well, you know, pastor so-and-so asked and so I will. <laughs> I get it's guilt trip city. Yeah. 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 I, th- I think that that's one of the things that if you can figure out how to do that, it doesn't have to be a you know, a huge film shoot or, and you could have somebody on Sunday yeah. morning or whenever your services during announcements, you know, Hey, can you just give us like a testimony around mm-hmm. the impact of serving? You know, mm-hmm. I think that's something that could be really powerful. Yeah, for sure. Everybody wants to know how their impact or that they made an impact. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Um, just like giving, communicating the need. Yep. I think we make a lot of assumptions that the people that attend our churches know what it takes to run our churches. Yeah. Um, So clearly communicating all of the ways that someone can serve. Yeah. Because if I don't know better, if I was not born and raised a church kid and I don't just happen to know all the behind the scenes stuff, if I come, especially if I'm a new believer. Sure. I step in on a Sunday or most likely Sunday and I just see these very uh, obvious things 
yeah. like worship, um, door greeters, and I might assume those are the only opportunities. Yeah. And they're only on Sunday morning, but I'm attending on Sunday morning, so there's no place for me. So I think we don't do often a great job of providing all of the ways that someone can fuel our mission forward yeah. in the mundane, non-Sunday moments. Yeah, 100%. And again, yeah, like sort of lift the curtain and let people right. see this is all that this is all that's going on yeah. um <clears throat> no yeah I, th- I think that i think that's really good i think the other thing is make it simple to join you yeah know? so to sign up to get information mm-hmm. um you know again things like qr codes you know using your mobile app like lower all the barriers mm-hmm. so that people can do it and then the other thing i'll say and this this is challenging like you have to do this in a sensitive way mm-hmm. but sometimes um, sometimes people are just used to like, well, this always happens, yep. right? And um, sometimes you have to let people feel maybe the pain of like, this can't happen anymore because these people are getting burned out. Mm-hmm. And that sometimes, again, sensitive, thoughtful wisdom in doing that discernment. But sometimes that can help people be like, oh, well, I really, I really like coffee on Sunday too. So <laughs> right. I'll join the team, yes. you know, yep. so so-and-so is not having to do it every week. I think of um, that scene in the, there's a scene in the office where mm-hmm. they have, um, where Dwight gets fired and <laughs> then all these plants die. And I, right. Michael's like, well, why are the plants dead? How come the, yeah, how come the, my toys aren't like set up a certain way on my right. desk? Like all this stuff. And it's yeah. like, well, Dwight did that. So sometimes I think, being okay with those those things, um, you know, kind of falling off, so that mm-hmm. people feel the pain a little well, bit. Well, I'll take that a step further. In the this is you have to be sensitive, but I really believe in a little bit of tough love. Mm. Um, so a, a big component of the church that really raised me was we are spiritual contributors, not only spiritual consumers. Yeah. So helping people actually realize, um, and one of my pastors said it really well, and I'm not saying this is right for everyone, but. We didn't have some really um, complex membership process. Okay. So he used to say, if you run into somebody at the grocery store that you haven't seen in a while, and they're yeah. like, hey, what's up, man? Hey, where do you go to church? And you're like, I go to XYZ Church. Congrats, you're a member. Yeah, yeah. So now you participate. Yeah. If you, if you, were, if you love this place enough to tell someone, oh, I go there. Sure. Then it's time to get off the seat. Yeah. And contribute not only consume and there, yeah. there's a phase up to that of course like I want to again I want to be sensitive but at some point it's hey there's a responsibility yeah you're a part of a community yep. this is not just a service to feed you but now you get to participate back in so yeah. communicating the needs that are available but also a little bit of hey this is what discipleship is totally so get off the bench yeah you're on the team I don't know if you're waiting get, on an invitation but like hey you, you made the cut uh, yeah, you're on the team. Jump in there. You're on the uh, list that was posted. So which the position do you office. want to play? Yeah, because you're playing. Yeah, that's really <laughs> so. good. That's really good. All right, well, we have another another question here. Um, it says this: What are ways that we can reduce mistakes and error, errors in our data? We find that we have inaccurate info, and it's starting to affect communication. I'm sure it is starting to affect communication. Um, humans are humans. Yep. Uh, I don't think AI can fix that yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, we might become robots, but for now, humans are humans. Yep. So when we input our names and we misspell something, we don't think it's a big deal. Yeah. What a lot of church congregants don't know is you just created a duplicate record yep. in your church's database. I know database is super fun to talk about, but that happens. So like, shout out to every church administrator, mm-hmm. financial secretary that has to reconcile. Yeah. We see you. The we human errors. You. Yeah. So that's not fun, but duplication happens. So I don't know how we can reduce the human error, but having good data hygiene yeah. might be the, the other part of that conversation. Well, I do think one of the things you can do to reduce the human error is to like use more digital tools to capture that. Of course. So yeah. I think that like, I know that, that I was um, in ministry at a place where we would still have the physical connect card or, you know, whatever you want to call it. Um, like pencils? Yeah. Well, we didn't have pencils. Wow. We used pens. <laughs> yeah. We're a little more advanced. <laughs> who's, I'm sorry. Who's using pencils? I don't know. 
I, I don't because know. Because I just picture in the back they have like um, I don't know. My elementary school there was a pencil sharpener like yeah. bolted to the wall. Oh, and you just like <laughs> and you cranked it. I just picture they walk in and like they have those all around. What I so just you pictured. Go sharpen the pencil. I picture it in the middle of the sermon. <laughs> there's somebody that gets up and they're using the crank yeah. pencil sharpener and like Pastor Joe is like really yeah really yeah they have like a little plug in like yeah <laughs> i keep keep going anyway. maybe that's why we don't have pencils <laughs> yes so we we use pens all love to those using pencils <laughs> um but it was like is that a e or an o don't you know? know is that a i mm, i it's can't it's a seven this person clearly is a doctor because I can't read right. anything that they or wrote. Or a child. Yeah, or a child. <laughs> um, so I will say, though, one of the things that we saw is our our data really became much cleaner mm-hmm. when we really focused on use the digital version. Sure. Because then it's you're typing it in. I mean, how often do our phones autofill that information right. now? So. That's one thing to that I think really helps. Mm-hmm. Use more and more digital forms yep. and allow those to be how people are putting in info, how they're signing up, mm-hmm. how they're obviously giving, like all mm-hmm. of that. Well, our, our software, our database has duplicate identifiers. Yeah. And so for the for the staffer, there's reports that you can run as often as you want to show me the potential duplicates and you can merge those to always have cleaner data. Yeah. But then again, I think this is the third time I've said this. Communicate transparently with your congregation. Like, yeah. let them know, hey, we use a system. It's called X, and every time you fill out a form, that goes into the system. Yep. And we want to have really good data so that we can celebrate milestones in your life, so yeah. that we can participate in your family's activities, to know what's going um, on in your life. Yeah. So, speak over him. We got our we got our conference announcer who's joining us. We should ask him. We should. How do you have good data? Yeah. Want to bring him over? How do you know what's for lunch? Anyway. <laughs> but helping them understand when you interact with our digital tools, here's what happens behind the scenes. Yep. So, did you know that your your full name is important? Yeah. So help us help you, and in most softwares, it's a usage charge. So. It may not be a, it's kind of a weird conversation, but I don't think so. If I knew that every time I enter something that, that adds up, yeah, I would be more careful because I don't want to cost my church more money. Right. So again, help them understand the impact of their decisions, the cost involved if there is one. And then most people are super cool and be like, oh, well, now that I know, I'd be happy to pay more attention to how totally. I spell my name. Yeah, yeah. And I think then the, you know, using those tools, duplicate, you know, when mm-hmm. finding those duplicates. And I know some of the things that we have built mm-hmm. in that really help make that easy sure. to then resolve that. Right. And, you know, all is well again. Ask, so. like lean yeah. into your vendors and say how, what tools are built in to help me yeah. identify errors, identify duplicates, especially for the finance staff. Yeah. You're doing your contribution statements. Those are tax records. Super important. You don't want to mess that up. Yeah. So you don't how can your up. software help you yeah. not have bad data? Yeah. Don't use pencils. That's the... <laughs> or do. That's and big idea. Disrupt the sermon. Yeah. Or also don't use something that could easily be erased too. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that also seems like an episode for failure. <laughs> Might yeah. be tricky. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, we uh, One more here. Uh, we're finding that people aren't using our mobile app as much as we'd like. How can we increase further adoption? Good question. Do you have that? I have that. I've, yeah, I do. Uh, you, you go. Okay. I went first last time. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is why do you have a mobile app? I know that sounds silly, but a lot of churches feel like I need a website and I need a mobile app and I need social media. Yep. And they don't necessarily, and I don't, I don't mean this negatively, but they don't necessarily know that those platforms really serve different purposes. Yeah. So... If you have a mobile app, what is the intended purpose? And yeah. are you actually using that tool in the way that it's designed? Yeah. Because you might have bad adoption because you've turned your mobile app into a glorified website. Yeah. It's not functional. Yeah. Or you're expecting like, so for instance, if I'm, if I, if I haven't been to your church before, I'm definitely going to check out your website sure. because I want to know when to get there. Where is it? What's the address? Yeah, right. What, <laughs> what do your I service do times? with my kids? How do all, the, all, all that the stuff. If I've never been there, I'm not downloading your mobile app. I don't even know what it is yet. Right. Like, I'm, I just, I'm like, 
we're just we're just it's meeting, you know. What I mean? Yeah, right. It's this like, is the first date here. Whoa, not, whoa, whoa. Yeah, let's not <laughs> let's not rush it. So, I think that's the other thing too is like have really clear. You said so. Understand the usage. Understand like who's the ideal person using this thing, right? right? So. I think that's something that with a mobile app, like that's people who are at your church, right? who would say, this is my home, this is where mm-hmm. I serve, this is where, you know, and, but once you do that, then I think you have a greater understanding of, so how do we now shape this tool mm-hmm. to serve that, that, you know, group of people? That, yes, that all makes perfect sense. And I think that's the major difference between your website is informative to mostly outsiders right. or new visitors your mobile app is now all right you've you've kind of graduated you yeah. belong here and you come here often so this is where you can log in to manage your giving to sign up for things to belong to a group um, sermon notes all, all the things that your app is more functional it's a yeah. tool not a bulletin board yeah i also think put it like start to put that in your newcomer process yes. in your you know, uh, there's a there's a lot of people who have a class, a membership process, a explore, you know, whatever. Put that in there. That makes so much sense. I mean, we kind of skipped step one is, have you told everyone that you have an app? Yeah. Is it easy to find? Yeah. Um, this came up really, really recently. Uh, a friend of mine goes to a larger church and mentioned something about the app. So I went to the website because I assumed down at the bottom there would right. be a link to download the app. I didn't find it. And I said, is this the same church? Because I see their Instagram, I see their Facebook, yeah. and that's it. I don't see an app. They're like, uh, yeah, we use it for everything. It's like, who's we? Where is this mysterious so app? So it, it was kind of like, yeah, it was yeah. like the secret society where, how do I know that? Yeah. So is it, we kind of skipped that. Is it really easy to find? And then are you pushing everyone? If you want adoption, if that's right. where you want your single source of usage, are you funneling everything to it? Yeah. And to the point of redundancy, go to our app. It can be downloaded at yeah. fill in the blank. Yeah, and I think looking at options too to make it really clear that it's yours. Right. Um, that's one of the things. Like usually, that's an investment. I mean, to, sure. to develop, to do, you know, all of that. It's mm-hmm. um, can take some time mm-hmm. and some resources, but it's also so nice when people see, like, we're so visual, right? Right. And so it's like, oh, I know this is the logo of our church. It's there on an app. Mm-hmm. Great. You know, I'm, I'm Consistency, good to go. consistency. It's the same, <laughs> like as a parent, you just say the same thing, your broken record. Yeah. But are you investing in that tool? Yeah. And the content is updated, it's reliable, and you are consistently using it. Yeah. If you're not doing a good job of that, how do you expect people to adopt it in the first place? Yeah. And I think, I think not shying away from like, have a, have not every week, but have a moment in your service where you're like, this is the time we're all gonna pull out our phones. Absolutely. There's a QR code, yep. or here's where you go. We're all gonna download this, get this set up, yep. get set and ready to go. Um, again, like walking with people doing Absolutely. that, I think could be really helpful. Yep. So. Don't make assumptions. Yeah. People may not know how to find it. Yeah. That's why nobody uses it. Exactly. <laughs> you haven't told them. And that is, uh, yeah, knowing's half the Step battle. Step one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? To quote G.I. Joe. So. I like it. Um, awesome. <laughs> well, well, this has been great. I, ho- I think that it's been helpful. I hope to answer some of these questions and we'll do more of these. I look forward to more questions. Yeah. I like being put on the spot. I, I know. think with my brain. Yeah, I <laughs> like, do too. So if you have more, you know, questions, send, send them in. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you would. That's a good question. We probably should think comments? about that. Yeah. In the, comments. In the comments. Yeah. Comments. Slide uh, into the DMs. Is that yeah, a, can you sure. do that? Yeah. On Instagram. Yeah. Follow us if you haven't. Um, yeah. We'd love to love to help and serve uh, as much as we can. It's also uh, Scott at podcast.com. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's not. I don't own the URL podcast.com. Somebody does. Somebody does. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. But not me. So. No. Stick to the comments for yeah, now. <laughs> for sure. Well, hey, we, yeah, we hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for listening, for watching. Um, yeah. Like Casey mentioned, um, leave a comment, subscribe, share this. Uh, we'd love to continue to help empower healthy churches and we're excited for more conversations more ask me anything episodes and all sorts of other wonderful things in the future yeah thanks for listening this episode of the church leadership lab podcast is brought to you by ministry brands the largest provider of church technology software 
over 90,000 churches rely on ministry brands for their single platform solution that brings together all the digital tools a church needs. From online giving to websites to church management software and more, Ministry Brands is leading the way in simple to use, innovative solutions, all with the goal of empowering healthy churches. To learn more, visit ministrybrands.com.